Welcome to my third video covering content for test 2 of the OCR entry level certificate in computer science. In this video we will examine the moral issues surrounding the use of computers. So what is meant by the term moral issue? When we talk about moral issues in computing we are referring to those issues that can be classed as right or wrong, good or bad, positive or negative and all the grey areas in between. For example, is it right or wrong to replace a human job with a computer? Well, you could argue it could be wrong, because it creates greater unemployment, it will affect the life of the individual, i.e. they will not have as much money, and it could be expensive for the company to implement a more expensive system. Also, it could be argued that this could be right, because the computer can work all day without a rest, and it is perfectly accurate, and it can work faster. In this video, we will examine three moral scenarios, looking at the positive and negatives of each. So, in scenario one, we're looking at computers in hospitals. So the scenario suggests, a local hospital uses computers to monitor the vital signs of patients, i.e. pulse, breathing, etc. And it automatically gives a patient a regular dose of painkiller. The patient also has a button to administer painkiller if their pain is too great. The machine keeps track of how much painkiller has been administered to prevent overdosing. The aim here is to discuss the positive and negative moral issues of using this system. So let's look at the positives first of all. The first positive is that computers are reliable and they can work all day, whereas a human can't. Computers are accurate and they can administer exact doses of medicine. Humans, by comparison, can make mistakes. The hospital wouldn't need to hire as many staff to constantly monitor the patients, and that would save them money. And plus, the actual computer system can monitor the patients 24-7. The staff have to pop in and out on rare occasions. Also, the computer will provide an immediate response, so the patient will not have to wait for a nurse or a doctor. If we look at the negative arguments, computers may be replacing human jobs. Computers cannot check if a patient is comfortable or provide reassurance. People may not trust computers to administer medicine, and this is a common problem amongst people, especially the elderly. And what if the machine fails? Who will know? Will there be some warning? Or will the patient be left suffering in pain? Let's have a look at our second scenario. This one's dealing with people's habits. So computers have changed the world. Once, people would use a dictionary to look up words. Now they use the internet. People used to only talk to people when they saw them. Now they're in constant contact via text or social media. In this scenario, we discuss the positive and negative moral impacts that computers have had on the changing shape of the world, and in particular, on people's habits. So, our positive arguments include People are easier to contact in the modern day era. This means that you can speak to them when you need them, rather than having to wait until you see them. Text messages or emails can be used if a response does not need to be immediate. So once upon a time, we used to have to ring somebody or see them in person. If they weren't at their phone or we didn't know where they were, we'd have to wait. Now we can leave them a text message and they can respond in their own time. People can stay up to date with news and events. So now, straight away, people can go on their phones or their tablets or their computers and see exactly what's going on in the world. Before, you'd have to just watch the TV news broadcasts and only see what they were reporting. People can research on the go. So they do not have to travel to a library to get a book. This saves money and it saves the environment because they're no longer traveling. And people can use their devices to get motivated. So, for example, uh, people nowadays use their apps to track running, fitness, and all their daily routines. Some of the negative arguments of this, people are constantly looking at phones and not talking to each other, which is affecting people's social skills. People are losing their basic social skills, such as body language and verbal communication. People are becoming sloppy writers, often using abbreviations or text speak when they're actually writing essays. People often cannot switch off, so rather than relaxing, their phones are constantly going, and this can lead to poor mental health. People are becoming too reliant on tech, 
and without it they feel lost. Think about it, if you go on holiday and you have no phone signal, does it feel a bit strange? There are also people who have tech and there are those people who do not have any tech. And this creates a social divide. So we have the haves, the people who have the technology, and the have-nots. And this can create conflict between the two sides. Our final scenario deals with information and privacy. Information is in constant supply in the modern era. The internet is in most people's back pockets and people post to the internet every day, either on websites or social media. Information is available globally in an instant. So here we discuss the positive and negative moral aspects of using computers to spread information and people's concerns about privacy. So for the positives, people can share documents, photos or videos easily wherever they are in the world. Posting to social media is like an instant backup of data, especially for things like photos and videos, because once they're on social media, you can always download them again. You don't have to be reliant on saving them to a CD or to a backup hard drive. People can stay in contact with more friends wherever they are in the world, so they can always wish them happy birthday or send them nice words or support them if they're in trouble. People have instant access to information, advice, support, services, entertainment, and all of this is provided through the internet. Also, people can store lots of information in one place. They do not need to have large filing cabinets in their house or in their businesses um, with lots of paper in it. This means that we can save space and we can actually use that space for other things, such as making our environments look nicer. On the negative side though, Identity theft is now very common, where people steal your personal information from your computer or your device as you are using it. Once they've stolen this information, they will use it to buy stuff or to actually mimic you online. People often post a lot of rubbish on social media, which makes it tedious to use. Who really cares if you had beans and chips for tea? If people posted more positively and about interesting facts, then it would be more important to people to check each day. People often get bombarded with too much information and this means that sometimes they can miss out on the good stuff. So there might be a really interesting post that you would be really interested in reading. But if you've been looking through loads and loads of random rubbish, you might miss that. The constant need for usernames and passwords to access data can be hard to manage. So unless you trust technology to look after your passwords, then you will have to try and remember them all. And finally, people worry about signing up to services due to the fear of being hacked or getting viruses. And nowadays, we have to sign up to virtually everything online before we can use it. When you get to the exam for test two, if you get asked any moral, legal or environmental issues, remember that we just need to talk about them in general. Make an argument for and make an argument against. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one where we will cover legal matters.